thank um, the organizers, Christoph, you and your team, um, for the excellent uh, organization for this conference. And I think the uh, measure as to whether a conference has been successful or not is that one doesn't want it to close. So uh, I get that uh, feeling at this conference, but I have the uh, duty to, to close and to make some comments. The theme of the conference was the value of values in responsible business. Responsible business connotes that there must be values. Because to be a responsible business or business person, you need to be a good corporate citizen. And value in, in business terms has several, several meanings. You add value. In the days of Milton Friedman, it was monetary value. He said, his famous statement, the business of business is business. And in Australia recently, I gave a talk in which I pretended I was Milton Friedman and I was also Milton King. I said the business of business is business and then as Milton King, I asked Milton Friedman but there are companies like the Coca-Cola company, Procter & Gamble, Unilever, they were all doing business when you made that statement. Their business model was completely different from that, what it is today. Today they had value in the triple context of commerce, the impact that their business model has on society and the impact it has on the environment or the natural assets of planet Earth. And unless value is being added on that basis, if a corporation is making an adverse impact on society and environment and yet making a bottom line, that means that the at the expense of society and the environment. And this is no longer acceptable in the 21st century. Then there are drivers of value in the business world. The drivers of value today are fourfold. There's the social revolution, the Arab Spring, there's an awakening of citizenry. The Wall Street occupiers, St. Paul's occupiers. There was and there is a thinking amongst the people of the world, clouded, but it's there about this sort of uh, cloaked wizardry of the masters of the universe, the investment bankers. Just not acceptable anymore. And I think we've seen only in the last few days the rigging of an eyeball rate, something which I've dealt with for years in the business world, which is the lending rate between major banks and the platform on which you and I have rates set for our businesses and also in our personal lives for mortgages, etc. The second value driver is the economic revolution. In 2008, the concept of short-term capitalism came to an end. Today, it is sustainable capitalism. If a business cannot sustain value creation and actually inform its stakeholders, that it's going to sustain value creation in the very changed world of the 21st century, then it is not adding value. There's no value, nor is it a responsible business. The third value is the concept of ethics, which I prefer to call intellectual honesty. It's the honest application of mind for decisions on behalf of an entity that's absolutely dependent on you as an individual. I want you to imagine, heaven forbid, today that you have an 18-year-old brother who was injured in a motorcar accident here in Geneva and became incapacitated of mind for the rest of his life 
But a neurosurgeon told you that he would live to 90 years of age. And you had to care for him for the rest of his life. None of you in this room, I suggest, would do it otherwise than in his best interests. None of you would contemplate to filch from him some benefit for yourself. You would take great care in your decision making, great care of his assets. Stewardship. You would be diligent in doing your homework in understanding his circumstances and planning for him short, medium and long term. And whatever skills you have, you would apply without compensation in his best interests. Fascinating, isn't it? That those are your duties as a director of a company, as a leader of global ethics, as a leader of any entity. And that's why I have often written that leadership, the foundation of leadership, must have an ethical foundation. It must have this honest application of mind, getting rid of intellectual baggage, present needs, past experiences, and honestly applying your mind in an unbiased manner in the best interests of that entity in order to sustain value. And responsible business, well that must be seen in the context of the change world in which we live. Financial crises, climate change crisis, radical transparency, population growth, ecological overshoot. You and I have used the natural assets of planet Earth faster than nature is generating them, regenerating them, and we continue to do so. For the last two decades, since 1992, since Rio 92, the world has known, or ought to have known, that the planet was burning. The planet was in crisis. Entities, not only companies carrying on business, all entities knew that they couldn't carry on as usual. Yet the vast majority of them carried on as usual. And that's why, in my judgment, those two decades from 92 to 12 are the two decades of stupidity. Commentators, I feel doubt, will look back at those two decades and say, where was intellectual honesty? Where was the thinking? Where was the ethics? In running entities, in a world in which there was limited capacity, and we had exceeded that capacity. We had used the limited, resource, the limited resources of planet Earth. We knew there were no longer limitless. We knew we could no longer let the Earth absorb waste as if it had an infinite capacity to do so. We knew we were toxifying and retoxifying the land and the water systems of our planet. And yet, most companies and entities carried on as usual. It's only in 8, 9 and 10 that some of the great multinational enterprises started carrying on business as unusual applying their minds to these issues and deciding to, for example, prompt and gamble to say in the next seven to ten years none of their factories in over 80 countries would be driven on the main work by renewable energy sources. They would re-engineer their products which you and I use on a daily basis so that you and I will use 50% less water and 50% less energy in consuming them. Rio plus 20 was, in my judgment, not a failure. It was a failure by our political representatives. Our political leaders had consistently failed. But the real victors coming out of Rio plus 20, in my judgment, were all of us. The representatives of the private sector, NGOs, organizations, such as global ethics, 
the entity which I'm now chairman of, the International Integrated Reporting Council, the Global Reporting Initiative. They came out stronger. They came out, and I defined it in Prague last week, as that the planet will be saved for our children and our children's children, not in the cabinet room. It will be saved in boardrooms and in the meeting rooms of entities such as Global Ethics. And you heard today the importance of a multi-stakeholder approach in many of the presentations done arising out of the workshops. We can no longer think in running responsible businesses in silence. We need integrated thinking. We need to be aware of the legitimate needs, interests, and expectations of the stakeholders linked to the company. The company is not a castle surrounded by a moat of shareholders. The corporate Bastille has been stormed. The revolution of integrated thinking is at an end. It's been completed. Companies around the world adopt the inclusive approach today of considering the needs, interests, and expectations of all their stakeholders and making a decision to sustain the total value of the company. The S&P 500 has shown that from 95 to today, until 95, more than 80% of the value of the market cap of the 500 top companies in the world were additives in the balance sheet according to international financial reporting standards. Today, more than 80% are not additives in the balance sheet. They are made up of the so-called non-financial aspects, the reputation of the entity, the quality of governance, the ethics of the leadership. Have they applied the principles of responsibility, accountability, fairness, and transparency? This integrated thinking is accepted universally, and I say that with confidence, because in issuing our discussion paper the 12th September at the IRC, we got responses from 33 countries, and it was unanimous that integrated thinking is the future. The only debate was the form of the outcome, the integrated report. And I think the integrated report should be as short as possible and we are in the information age, financial statements, G3 reporting that could be online, and you could draw down. Man needs ideas. Nations need ideas. The idea of integrated thinking and the idea of the integrated report is today's concept. But it's a concept whose time has come. And Man can stop an army, but he cannot stop a concept just time has come. Thank you very much for listening to me.